One of the, the hardest parts is when somebody, you know, like for me, somebody said, what did you do to make him so mad? Well, you know, there's, you know, it's a ki basic kindergarten thing. You keep your hands to yourself, but it's not ever okay to hit a man or a woman. And um, so if that's happening or you suspect that's happening, reach out. I, I didn't tell anybody, nobody questioned me. Um, I think that they just, nobody wanted to get involved. So get involved, because I can tell you that a nosy neighbor saved my life. So um, be that neighbor. If you, if you know what's going on next door, call. The worst thing that happens is they don't press charges, but it may be that intervention that saves their life. There is a group of us putting on that work together, that are collaborating together, putting on a conference on domestic violence and sexual assault. And it focuses a training for anybody who's a professional. So whether you're an EMT, you work in the prosecutor's office, you're a victim advocate, you're a prevention specialist, you're a police officer, probation officer. So we're focusing on professionals are putting the training on. So to help educate and train individuals who work with victims, it's very victim-centered of domestic violence and sexual assault. It's important that we're gearing more towards a victim-centered approach. And it's so important that our prosecutors and our probation officers and our EMTs and our law enforcement are aware of that some of the things they say and some of the things that they do can impact a survivor, can impact that victim. And when you do look at things for a, and not meaning that anybody is saying anything wrong or trying to be mean on purpose, but sometimes things come out that way. Sometimes you mean well when you tell a survivor to, you know, not jump from relationship to relationship, but that's a personal opinion and not a survivor, you know, and that's not personal centered for that survivor. So what we're trying to focus on is how to work with these victims. I had never heard Paula's story until today, and her story is extremely powerful. Um, she talks about why it's so important is because she tells her story. So not that she can tell you what everything that everybody did wrong, because there was a lot of issues, but in a way she tells her story so those same mistakes don't continue to happen. I think that one of the things about my story is people will say to me, you don't look like a victim. I think we have biases on what that it only her happens to certain people or in certain areas. And um, I'm a first responder, I'm a paramedic, so it, it, it kind of puts it in the backyard that if it can happen to me, it can happen to any of them. And so when you take those biases or those assumptions of what victims look like, um, then you, you know, you're leaving out a big part of the population. Nobody, there's no you know, victim or abuser DNA. And you have to realize that we're all one person away from becoming that victim. Standing Courageous is a nonprofit. We cover 14 counties in Northwest Ohio. Um, it was basically formed to help educate police, fire, EMS, um, judges, advocates on strangulation and domestic violence. And um, we're getting ready to expand to child abuse. But um, I started to use my case. I was um, a child abuse survivor and um, I'm a strangulation survivor. And it, most of the things happen is my abuser wasn't properly um, prosecuted because of lack of knowledge. So I wanted to make sure that I fixed that problem and so we started this to help educate. Our, our experiences matter. Our victims, even if they act like they're not listening, they're listening. Our experiences matter and we can do a better job working with our victims and helping them they get away from those abusers, getting, you know, finding the right prosecution, finding the details in their story without, so Paula's experience doesn't happen again. So somebody else's experience doesn't happen again. Maybe their conviction, their rape conviction will never happen because there's not enough evidence. So hopefully we can make a difference so there is enough evidence and we can, you know, what we do matters. 